Good sunny afternoon to you. This is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. We're going to have to put up with a little bit of noise. I think my neighbors are taking down a tree. Someone in my neighborhood is. I'm out here weeding and wanted to talk with you about why it is that I don't have to do that much weeding out in the garden. And particularly about a plant that helps me in this way. So I use a lot of wood chip mulch, I use a lot of chop and drop mulch, and I use living mulches. And I wanted to specifically focus on a living mulch, this one, and that's Calendula officinalis. So Calendula's typically called just by its genus name, although it has other names, common names, pot marigold. And I recently heard it was called Ruddles in some places, which I think is kind of a, I don't know the etymology of that name, but that's a cute nickname. So this is a traditional garden plant that comes in a striking amount of genetic diversity. I was given one plant uh, excuse me, one packet of seeds for this plant 10 years ago, and I've never had to buy seeds since. And I'm going to come in here and see this plant is really hopping with sweat bees right now. So I'm going to see if I can get it to focus for you all. Get a glimpse of some of these native bees that are just going to town here. So I was given the parent was sort of a salmon color like this one or that one back there. And from that one parent, I have gotten dark, vibrant orange, a lighter orange here, really lemon yellow, like this one, and salmon and shades of apricot. So this plant has really got a lot of diversity in it. And I don't do anything other than let the seeds go where they want and it comes up in this array. So one plant can live for, typically you, you think of it as an annual, but if you have a mild winter, it will overwinter. Calendulas grow between eight and 18 inches tall, depending again on that genetic diversity. I really like them as a living mulch. So while I have the wood chips and I have the chop and drop, having living green mulches is a great practice in permaculture. And I like it in my veggie garden around the borders, around the edges to kind of spill over my raised beds and suppress weeds. It's real easy to get weeds growing at the edge of the raised bed where you don't really trample that corner where the path, the path hits the the edge of the raised bed. So if these spill over, they do a great job shading the soil, conserving water for the tomatoes and other things around them. And they suppress weed growth. I also grow other things like love and a mist here. But today I really want to go into some of the other benefits besides being a living mulch that calendula has. Okay, so Calendula is a really good pollinator food and I'm going to keep trying to show you all these sweat bees in here. Honeybees like it, bumblebees like it, all of the native little solitary bees like it and lots of different kinds of flies like it. Okay, so the flower we've talked about before, this open face flower. I'm really big on things that pollinators like. This open face kind of daisy looking flower is going to bring in honeybees. Calendula also is a plant that bumblebees like to sleep in. So in the evening, I will come out and 
this flower kind of curls up a little bit in the evening and it's the perfect size for a bumblebee bed. So be careful in the evening that you don't squish a bumble if you're out here picking this flower. It's just like a nice little, nice little bed for a bumblebee. They really like sleeping in them. So it provides shelter and food for pollinators. For people, it has other benefits. So it is rich in triterpenoids and saponins. So it's used often in things like making anything you're going to use that is topical and soothing to the skin. So it has this anti-inflammatory property and it's traditionally used topically. I don't know of uses for ingesting it, but it's really safe and considered efficacious to use it for psoriasis and eczema and um, dandruff and really dry chapped skin. Of course, with any botanical product, you always want to spot test it first to make sure that you don't have a botanical allergy. I make salves with this product, so I pick the flowers and I dry them, and I make a salve with broadleaf plantain, the calendula blossoms, jojoba oil, um, and beeswax from my bees. So it's really good for dry chap skin. Gardener's hands tend to get real torn up. I have some autoimmune issues, so my skin on my hands can get really damaged easily and so I use a lot of it. It's also good for a hair rinse if you have dandruff. So the other thing is that it has a lovely orangey color so if you're making soap out of it it can really make a nice color to the soap as well as having soothing qualities to the skin. Folks often mix it with oatmeal in soaps. So when I pick it I dry the whole flower head. You can see here. And then I just immerse that in, um, in the carrier oils that I'm using and um, then I make a salve with it. So aside from harvesting the plant itself, I don't, um, the flowers itself, I don't harvest and store the seeds other than I will to give some to friends. So here's what the seeds look like this time of year get in here and pick one. So this is a green seed head. And when these are mature, they turn kind of grayish brown and you can let the wind scatter them or you can scatter them where you want in the garden. Each one of these little bits will become a new plant. The seeds keep for years and years. If you pick them and keep them very dry. So here they tend to be mature in fall late enough that I want to spread them out and dry them really well before I store them because they are mature when the weather's quite damp and I don't want them to mold, right? But once you've got them stored and dried, they'll keep a very long time and you just, you just literally sprinkle them. So I don't obviously want to sprinkle them right into a path, but I sprinkle them where I want them to come up and that's it. That's all you have to do. If they come up where you don't want them, you simply yank them up. They come up quite easily. So I hope that gives you a little picture on some of one of the plants that I use for a living mulch, that's Calendula officinalis, the pot marigold. Great medicinal plant, soothing anti-inflammatory properties for the skin, a great living mulch, a fantastic insectiary plant. So it really does the permaculture job of stacking functions. When we talk about stacking functions, we mean one plant or object in your yard or your home doing many things at once. And this plant does a great job of that. It's also not particularly prone to disease. Late in the fall, it does get powdery mildew. Doesn't kill the plant or harm it in any way. It's just sort of like how zucchini tends to at the very end of the year here in Oregon. I don't treat it with anything. Other than that, it's very disease resistant. It loves full sun. It can tolerate a little bit of shade. It, it doesn't mind afternoon shade. Very hardy. Very, very easy to grow. So low effort, high yield plant. I wanted to say too, I really enjoy sitting here making these videos. 
it gives me a break from the actual yard chores and gives me a chance to kind of observe things in the garden. As I sat here getting ready to make this video, taking my little break from weeding and yard work, I got to watch Sweat Bees with my eight-year-old for quite a while. We had a really good time talking about it. So I appreciate when I make videos for you all, it makes me pause and really observe the garden more. So thank you for giving me that opportunity. I hope you all got something out of this video. If you did, please share it with your friends who are gardeners or might be interested in gardening. And please let me know what topics would interest you in the future. I will be back with another video real soon. For now, I'm going to get out of the sun. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your day.